Hey there, in this video we will learn different methods of preparation of amines. Let's start with the first one, reduction of nitro compounds. Well, if you reduce nitro group, you can easily get NH2, right? So NO2 can easily go to NH2, but how? We have three ways of doing it. Let's see the first one, which is catalytic hydrogenation. So catalytic hydrogenation is not coming in front of you for the first time. You remember hydrocarbons? That is exactly the place where you learn for the first time catalytic hydrogenation where an alkene was converted to alkane using hydrogen in the presence of platinum palladium nickel you remember that yeah we use the same so here we can take nitrobenzene we can add hydrogen in the presence of catalyst so you understood what catalyst am i talking about well right it can be nickel platinum palladium okay any of these catalysts can be used now the other method that can be used is the treatment of the nitro compound with acid in the presence of metal. Now the metal that will be used with acid is different. So you can either use iron or tin or in fact you can even use zinc. But with that you would have to use an acid like hydrochloric acid in this case. So uh, the first part is you are going to use hydrochloric acid let's say with a metal say iron out here. Okay and what you get is going to be an anilinium ion after providing the basic backup that's when you get aniline so what you see treatment of the nitro compound with acid and iron and we can also use zinc tin or a metal salt such as tin chloride okay now let's see it in parts how exactly it is happening so let's say i start with nitrobenzene and to it i add tin in the presence of hydrochloric acid I will not get aniline straight away, okay? I will now get anilinium ion, okay? So, because you're providing hydrochloric acid, you're going to get anilinium chloride. Now, after you provide the basic backup, this OH- is going to abstract this H+, and that's when you get aniline, all right? So, yes, nitrobenzene is converted to aniline first you have to provide metal in the presence of the acid and then it's very crucial to provide the basic backup as well okay now the third important method that can be used here is the electrolytic reduction so electrolytic reduction is quite interesting depending on what kind of a medium you are taking the product is going to change for example if you take nitrobenzene and you carry out electrolytic reduction but in strongly acidic medium what you get is this check n phenyl hydroxyl amine so this is a hydroxyl amine group nhoh now it will rearrange itself and it will give you para hydroxy aniline so you can see that you are not getting aniline you're getting para hydroxy aniline so we were discussing the production of aniline how can we get just NH2 then? Well, what you can do is you can start with nitrobenzene and take weakly acidic medium and then carry out the electrolytic reduction. Okay, so strongly acidic medium is giving you para hydroxy aniline, but here when you're using weakly acidic medium, that's when you're getting aniline. Point to be noted. All right. Okay, now next reaction is very, very important which is ammonolysis of alkyl halides. So you also see these reactions in the chapter haloalkanes. But let's explore this reaction further. So in ammonolysis of alkyl halide, what we are doing is we are doing the lysis of alkyl halide. So you can clearly see that this alkyl halide is undergoing lysis with the help of ammonia and hence the name ammonolysis. That means breaking with the help of ammonia. So what's happening is the ammonia here is acting like a nucleophile and is attacking the carbon which is directly attached to halogen resulting in the formation of this salt of amine and once you provide basic backup what you get is a primary amine. Let's understand it with an example say you take ammonia with ethyl bromide okay so what do you get you get ethanamine check. Now, how is that happening? Let's understand it with a mechanism, okay? So, ammonia has a pair of electron. So, we'll act like a nucleophile, right? And like I said, this carbon out here is electrophilic as bromine is more electronegative. So, it is delta minus. This one is a delta plus. So, this carbon is electrophilic. 
So lone pair attacks this carbon and as a result, what do you get? You get a salt, a salt which looks like this. Check. Okay. So what you are getting out here is aminium bromide salt. So what I am doing is just dropping the E of amine. So aminium salt. You get it? Now, once you've got this, what happens next is another molecule of ammonia is going to abstract this H+. So now it is going to act like a base. Now notice, in the first step, it was acting like a nucleophile, but here it is acting like a base as now it's abstracting H+. Do we remember the difference between a nucleophile and a base? A nucleophile attacks an electron deficient center and a base attacks a proton, right? So here now ammonia acts like a base, abstracts this proton and as a result what you get is ethanamine, alright? And let me also tell you, the repetition of this whole process may lead to a secondary amine, tertiary amine and even quaternary ammonium salts if the alkyl halide that you're taking is present in excess. Now, how can you think of it? Think of it at this step, what is happening? You're getting ammonia is attacking here. What you get is ethanamine. Now, what if this ethyl bromide further reacts on this ethanamine? Let's think of it, right? Let's take a look at this reaction. What will happen? What do you think? So, this is C2H5Br. This further reacts with this C2H5NH2. You can understand that this again can act like a nucleophile and attack this carbon which was directly attached to bromine and can result in what? A C2H5 and C2H5, two hydrogens like this. So again, what you get is a salt. Okay. Now what can happen? Ammonia can abstract one of the H plus and as a result, what you're getting is a two degree amine. Check. Now, this journey doesn't end here. It has a lone pair still. So, it can act like a nucleophile for another alkyl halide, isn't it? So, another ethyl bromide is all set for a monolysis. Who is stopping? So, what you will get now is a tertiary amine. Similarly, you can get a quaternary amine. You understand the problem? There are multiple products possible. So, how to avoid this multiple product? formation well we have a way out you can make use of excess ammonia and you're sorted if you're using excess ammonia you will not get multiple products so multiple ammonolysis shall not happen all right now let's move on to the next method that is reduction of nitriles so nitrile group like you know is cn group so what you can do is you can start with any alkyl cyanide Add to it hydrogen in the presence of nickel and what you're getting is you can see it's simple reduction CH2 NH2 check right you may not just use hydrogen in the presence of nickel you may also use sodium amalgam NAHG is called soda amalgam or sodium amalgam in the presence of ethanol then also this is also going to carry out reduction so cyanide will be reduced to again amine and there's another reducing agent that can be used, the famous reducing agent of chemistry, lithium aluminium hydride, can be used in the presence of tetrahydrofuran, which we are writing like this, THF, which is the solvent here. And then you have to provide the aqueous medium. And what you get is, again, amine. All right. So, again, reduction of cyanide is happening to amine. Next method of production of amine is by reduction of amide. So for amides, we can again make use of the same reducing agent that we just learned. So you take an amide, you add to it lithium aluminium hydride in the presence of tetrahydrofuran, provide aqueous medium and what you end up getting is this carbonyl group simply gets reduced, right? So once this carbonyl group gets reduced, think of it just like addition of two hydrogen atoms here will give you an amine, right? So yes, here we go. We learn so many methods of preparation of amines.